Hey there, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of 3B TV. I'm Brian. This is 3B Farm and Homestead here in beautiful upstate New York. And on this episode of 3B TV, I am so excited to finally share with you some of the vegetables that we are going to be planting here on 3B Farm and Homestead here uh, in 2018. I have been waiting impatiently uh, for the last several weeks for the final piece of the puzzle to arrive. The final uh, one of my seed orders finally arrived um, this weekend and so now I can finally put out this video and share with you the things that we're going to be planting. Before I do, I did want to uh, kind of uh, refer back to the videos that we had put together uh, a couple of weeks ago about the value proposition and why we were going to order from the seed companies that we did. So I'll link to those right here. Uh, and in part, I wanted to refer to those because Oxbow Farm, um, I believe out of Canada, had commented on a couple of my videos and had stated that they felt like I was focusing too much on the cost per unit um, and said that if the seed doesn't sprout, it doesn't matter how cheap it is, um, it's not a good value. Uh, good value is good quality seed and so cheaper isn't always better. And I would absolutely 100% agree with that. Um, so, you know, while I have gone through and I've looked at uh, the per unit price, always keep in mind that it's a your mileage may vary kind of situation. And just because it is cheaper doesn't always mean that it is better. And in his experience, um, and I will link to his video right here, um, he, he actually put together a list of his top uh, seed companies that he's dealt with. And Fedco Seeds, which was my top seed company, uh, just from a value perspective, was on his list, but it was with a caveat. Um, and that is that he had had some experiences where the uh, seed hadn't germinated well and um, the customer service wasn't very good. I've heard that from a few other people online. I've not experienced that personally. And as far as I know, the two friends of mine that I know that order from Fedco haven't experienced that, or at least they haven't told me that. Um, but I did want to just kind of mention that um, because I don't want you to think that um, you know I'm you know on the Fedco bandwagon and I've got my head in the sand. Um, obviously, for Oxbow Farm in a market garden type situation, if something doesn't sprout, if it doesn't come up, that's going to affect his livelihood. For me, if something doesn't come up, it doesn't sprout very well you know, it's not as big of a deal. Yes, am I going to be disappointed? Obviously, I will be. But um, in his particular situation where he's raising the vegetables as his primary source of income, that is a totally different ball game than from where I'm at. And he's also ordering seed in a far greater quantity than I am. So his experience is going to be a lot broader than mine would be. And so I just wanted to share that with you. Um, again, for me, Fedco has been great the, the number of times I've ordered from them. Um, but, you know, people have had some issues with seed germination rates with them. And so keep that in mind. Um, just because it's cheaper doesn't necessarily always mean that it is better. All right, all of that out of the way, let's get right down to it. I'm not going to share with you every variety that uh, we chose this year or we will be here forever, um, but I did want to kind of highlight some of the things that I'm most excited about. So we'll start with the Fedco order because that was where the bulk of my money went, as you can see from this box. It's all Fedco seeds. And um, so we ordered some beans uh, and some sugar snap peas from them. Um, the one, the variety that I'm most excited about is this one called Dragon Lungieri uh, Bush Bean, which is a, a bean with some stripes in it. So very excited about that. I um, ordered a bunch of, uh, you know, cabbage, um, cucumbers, some cucumbers I've done before, lemon cucumber, Market More 76, um, some pickling cucumbers, a couple of different varieties of squash, uh, zucchini, um, pie pumpkins, some beets that we've had good luck with before. Um, one that I've never tried though before and I'm very excited to try is this Chiagia or Chiagia, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but that's a beet that is actually kind of like a, 
bullseye shaped. It's 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 uh, got rings of pink and white, and uh, or I shouldn't say bullseye shaped. It's bullseye colored. It's it's rings of red and white through it. So very excited about that. Got some carrots. Haven't planted carrots in a long time, um, so I'm gonna do this Nantes Scarlet or Scarlet Nantes, which is a very common variety. But then also this one here that I've never heard of before. But I wanted a round uh, carrot, um, one that's kind of little ball-shaped ones. And uh, this is Tonda di Parigi, I guess is what it is. I, I, I probably butchered that. Excited about that. Um, now getting into tomatoes, I'm probably the most excited about the tomatoes this year, the tomatoes and peppers probably. And that's in part because the nursery or the, the farm store where I bought my transplants from um, always, it never really had a great variety. It was always very common stuff. And not, not, not that there's anything wrong with that, but it was the brandy wine, uh, not the brandy wines, the beefsteak, um, the early girls, um, those, those kinds of, you know, a lot of the burpee um, seeds and not m many heirloom varieties at all. Um, and so I'm very excited to try some of these. So the paste tomatoes I've got is an Amish paste tomato and this one called Bell Star. Now I think, if I'm not mistaken, the Amish paste tomato is a plum tomato and the Bell Star is more of a round paste tomato. So excited about those. Uh, and then I got a whole bunch of different uh, tomatoes here that I'm so excited about. Um, let's see, this is one I'm super stoked about. Pineapple, uh, bicolor, excited about that. Weaver's Black Brandywine, so excited about that. A Pink Brandywine, very excited about that. Um, Jubilee and Rutgers 250. Rutgers 250 looks to me like more of a, just a round, kind of what you expect from in a tomato at the supermarket. And then this one here I'm super stoked about, the Paul Robinson, uh, a Robeson um, tomato, which is, as I recall, it's a brown, uh, like a like a brownish or a black tomato. So excited to try that one. Uh, then I got some peppers um, that I'm really excited about. Again, at, at the nursery I got things from, wasn't a huge uh, variety as far as um, peppers went. And uh, here I've got, um, Gilboa Orange, uh, King of the North Sweet, which is uh, green and red pepper. Um, the uh, Purple Beauty, so excited about that. I've never tried a purple pepper before, so excited about that. Uh, chocolate Sweet Pepper, which is a brown pepper. Um, and then uh, Jalapeno. Let's see what else we have in here. S see, I think that's pretty much all the stuff. And I, then I've got some onions, some turnips. Uh, some spinach, um, and some lettuce. So that was my Fedco order. Very excited to try this stuff. And um, so, uh, yeah. On to my MI Gardener uh, order. So MI Gardener, again, I got, um, you know, just some standard stuff. Uh, Swiss chard, some onions, broccoli, cauliflower, some cabbage. Uh, nothing super exciting there. Going to be trying kale for the first time this year. So I uh, want to see how that is and see if we like it. Um, purple carrots, excited to try those out. Turkish orange eggplant. Now we planted um, a black variety or a purple variety last year and I, I got a black variety from Fedco, but this one looked really interesting to me and we really enjoyed the eggplant last year. So excited about trying that. And then red burgundy okra. My mom planted some okra last year, made pickled okra. I like okra fried, and uh, so I'm excited to try that out and to uh, see how that works well, uh, see if it works well for us. Then I got a couple of different melons, and I'm going to try something very interesting this year. I'm going to try to uh, run my melons up uh, a trellis and then support the fruit with either pantyhose or t-shirts or you know old rags or something like that and see if that works for me. Again, I grow a lot of stuff in raised beds and so I wanna see for space saving purposes if that will work. So I got a couple of different melon varieties. Then the next company I told you I was gonna order from was Totally Tomatoes and I did order from them. 
I kind of screwed up my order for them though. So what happened is I placed my order and then a, about a week later, I went looking for my receipt and I couldn't find it. And I got scared and I thought, well, you know what? Maybe I didn't order it. So I went ahead and I placed an order for the mariachi and uh, see the mariachi pepper and the volcano peppers that I told you about, which make it awesome. Together they make an awesome, awesome pepper relish. So I placed a second order. Well, at the time I didn't know it was a second order. And uh, lo and behold, I got two packages in the mail. The first time I ordered three packets. The second time I ordered a packet each. So I have plenty of mariachi and volcano peppers to, tr uh, to plant this year. Very excited about that. But one of the things that they did uh, is they included a couple of trial packs of stuff. And I'm excited about these trial packs. One is a tomato called egg yolk, which is a little uh, cherry tomato, I guess. And then a cucumber called Painted Serpent that um, it's a, a unique Armenian type burpless cucumber that can grow up to 36 inches long and curl into snake-like shapes. So we'll put a couple of them in the ground and we'll see what we get. Very excited about that. And last but not least, <clears throat> after I had done my videos about our uh, the seed companies we were going to use and the value proposition and all of that, I watched a video, I believe it was a video, or I might have listened to his podcast, the Cogcast, Cogcast Podcast by Jason Smith over at Cog Hill Farm. And I'm not sure if it was the video or if it was a video or if it was in the podcast, but he takes every podcast and turns it into a video. So I will link to the video right here. Um, in it, he started talking about a tomato called the Radiator Charlie Mortgage Lifter. And I had seen the Mortgage Lifter in uh, several of the seed catalogs. I had almost ordered the Mortgage Lifter. And so I started doing some research and I found out that there is more than just one strain of Mortgage Lifter. Um, these tomatoes back in there, many of them are from the early part of uh, uh, the 1900s, 1920s, 1930s, uh, kind of depression era where people developed these strains of large tomatoes and were able to pay off their mortgages by selling these plants. And Radiator Charlie was one of those strains um, that was developed in, I believe, West Virginia. A lot of these came out of West Virginia and Kentucky. And so these seeds have been kind of curated, curated and saved um, over many, many years. And uh, so now we have these heirloom varieties. Um, and this one, the Radiator Charlie, is the one that is uh, Jason's favorite. So I started doing some research into it, found about these different strains, and I thought, you know, it'd be kind of fun to grow um, some of them side by side. In fact, I'd only found out about two of them, uh, Esterlees and the Radiator Charlie, when I went looking for a site that sold both varieties, I came across this site, I came across this site called Delectation of Tomatoes. And he had six or eight different varieties. I ended up ordering four of them. And in fact, he included on his uh, invoice here a nice little note that says, Thanks, Brian. I'll be curious to learn of your assessments after growing these mortgage lifter strains side by side. Best of luck this year, Dale. And so I have ordered Radiator Charlie's mortgage lifter, uh, S. I was saying Esterlees, but it's Est, Estlers, Estlers, Mortgage Lifter, Mullins, Mortgage Lifter, and Holidays, Mortgage Lifter. Um, and so excited to try those out. And then the last one that I ordered from him was one that was called World's Largest. And it's not really the World's Largest. In fact, it says right on here, well, not exactly, but most fruits are over a pound. Um, but this really had great reviews taste-wise, and so excited to try that out. And then Dale threw in this sample of a tomato called 
Tadzikski. Tadzikski. I don't even know. Um, but it comes out of Russia. And uh, so he sent this. And these are large tomatoes in the one to one and a half uh, pound raid, uh, range. And so I am super excited about my tomatoes in particular this year. So those are some of the things I'm gonna be growing this year. I know that for some of you, I am way behind. Some of you have already got transplants started. Some of you have even started planting stuff in the ground. Uh, I'm not at that point yet. Still got snow on the ground. I don't have any tunnels or anything like that. So I'm still several weeks out from being able to plant anything at all in the ground. But according to uh, Clyde's garden calendar, uh, that I will link to here below in the description. Um, I should be planting this week. I'm actually a week behind in planting my cabbage and cauliflower. And I should be planting this week um, my broccoli. And uh, so those will be the first things that will be going into my grow system. Um, that is actually going to be my next video. I'm going to be showing you my grow light system that I've put together. And uh, so looking forward to sharing that with you and uh, looking forward to getting some of these seeds started. And uh, hopefully we will have a bountiful harvest here on 3B Farm and Homestead. Looking forward to uh, hearing what you have chosen to uh, uh try out this year and if you have any familiarity with any of the varieties that I shared today uh, let me know in the comments below what your experience was um, I'd love to hear from you and then compare it to what my experience is this year and I'm looking forward to sharing with you how things turn out with these different mortgage lifters and uh, with these different tomatoes these heirloom varieties so excited about trying those out these different peppers just so I, I just can't wait and I just wish that Mother Nature would hurry up and get rid of the snow. Even as a snowboarder, I am ready for spring and uh, ready for the snow to go so I can start getting my fingers dirty and to get some seeds in the ground. But, as my grandfather used to say, whether the weather be cold, whether the weather be hot, the weather's the weather, no matter the weather, whether we like it or not. And so with those words of wisdom from my grandfather, I'll catch you later. Please like, share, subscribe. If you haven't already, click that notification bell so that you don't miss an entertaining, enthralling, informative episode of 3B TV. We will catch you later.